Hi. We're here. Hi. We're home. <laughs> yeah, we're home. We just rolled into um, Florida, or at least our home in Florida this evening. Do I want to tag Judy on this video? Why not? Why not? Why not? Okay, hey guys. Uh, we're doing another Eat Church. Glad we can do this uh, this evening. Um, come on in, get you a seat, grab your popcorn, um, share the video, let other people know, invite other people or whatever it is that we uh, that you do on there. And uh, look, Michelle come right in and got her a front row seat. Michelle, we were just talking about you yesterday on our trip. Oh yeah. It was good. It was a story from back good. in the day. Back, yeah. in the, back in the 90s. Okay, look, a lot of our favorites are already here. Our Christy is here. Welcome home. Thank you. And Kristen and Rachel and the business and Billy Jackson Yay. and all these wonderful people. We had a great trip. We did. What was the best thing about it? It was my birthday. Mm. So you <laughs> got to do like some birthday. celebrating on yeah. the way. Yeah, we got to see our friends in Louisiana. That was nice. Yeah. That Both was, on the way in and on the way out. That was that, Hey, that, Christy Manis. <laughs> And Mary Souter. Mary, are you still in Hawaii? Yeah, you guys are You guys are showing such beautiful pictures of Hawaii. And Ted They're is bragging. in... And Ted is in New Zealand. In New Zealand. And both of them brag. You notice how they put all these pictures of these exotic okay, places. Okay, can I just tell you, New Zealand is definitely a bucket list for me. Yeah, yeah, we need to get to New Zealand. Hi, babe. Here's Babe Souter. Babe actually contributed to our cause that we have going on right now. What's our cause? Our cause is to to get some more professional oh. um, uh, video equipment it's so we can do more Nevo, things. And it's this really cool device that's um, It's really cool. Portable. It, can, it can pan and it can zoom and it can do all this all this stuff and you get different angles and anyway, we're all excited. We're excited, yeah. Okay, let's get into this. Okay, what's today's topic? Today's topic is God is good, God cares, and God loves you. Actually, God loves you unconditionally. It seems really simple, but it's it actually is. very key. It's very simple. It's very key. And it's even though it's simple, what we find out is a lot of people um, When it struggle comes right it. down to it, they don't really believe it. Yeah, don't really believe it. No, they'll say, everybody will say <laughs> God is good. But in your situations, will God be good this time for me in this situation? Right. And uh, so briefly, you want to deal with those things. And my first verse is a verse in Hebrews 11, verse 6, about this kind of obscure character that's in the Bible that's this, has this magnificent life, this magnificent experience, and this magnificent event happens, and very little is said about it. Enoch. Enoch was taken so that he didn't see death. He skipped death. And he was taken, and, and before that happened... He had this testimony that he pleased God. So you read that and you think, well, God was that good to him. And Enoch was a pleaser of God, so I want to be a pleaser of God and God can be good to me. And then it, then it goes on to say that without faith, it's impossible to please God. For the he that comes to God must believe that he is, that he exists, and that he's a rewarder or giver to those who seek him, who diligently seek him or come to him. And, uh, and, and so there's a key in that that we want to start off with, talking about God is good. The key that Enoch had, Enoch, what this thing is telling us is that he had faith. He believed, and he believed that God existed, which most of us would qualify for. Most of us believe God exists. But Enoch believed that God was a rewarder of those who come to him, who approach him. He, he believed that God was good. He believed that God would give, was a giver. He believed that, and that is what pleased God, because God is good, and goodness wants to, uh, you know, when you're a giver, what makes you the happiest? When somebody, first of all, receives what you give, and then when they enjoy what you give, and therefore they're appreciative of, of, of what you give. And, and, and I say this all the time, that the reason God created us is because God is good and God is love. And because God is love, love, love always wants that outlet, always wants that, that object um, to pour out the love and the goodness and whatever abundance you have um, 
uh, upon them. And so God created man, not so he could try to keep a bunch of rules that he wasn't going to be able to keep, but he created man uh, to, to impart to man, to give to man his goodness and his, his love and his, his abundance. And that's why we're on the planet. And, and, and even though this is a simple message, we want, to, we want people to see this so clear that you are on this planet to receive God's goodness. That's really what, it, what it's all about. Then other things come out of that. Your, your particular purpose in life, your talents come out, your, uh, you become blessed to be a blessing. But we were created, as we see in the book of Genesis, to be the recipient of God's goodness, his love, and his abundance. And when we can receive that, that love of God, this is why this revelation is just so important, and you cannot talk about it enough. Once you know that God loves you, really loves you, with no conditions attached, then you can receive, you can receive a love like that. And when you receive that love of God into your heart, it fulfills you in a way that it's like a, a bird getting his wings back. Once the bird gets his wings, then he can be like, he can do what a bird's supposed to do. He can be like a bird is supposed to be. And mankind struggles with so much. There is so much hurt that people go through, so much pain, so much struggle, so much darkness that they grope their way through. It's like they're a bird with no wings. They're not able to fly. They're not able to, to operate fluidly in this, in this life, in this world that God puts in. There's a lot of insecurity when you don't feel secure, when you don't know that the one who created you likes you That's... or or wants good for you or wants to give you good things. You're always insecure. You're always unbalanced, unstable. And it really can affect you in so in every just way. every way. Yeah. It'll it for one thing, it it, it causes selfishness because we don't know that God's good to us, so we have to try to be good to us. Right. We don't know that God cares, so we have to care. Yeah. And we and and so that's why people even struggle. Christians that are very sincere and they, you know, they've they, even though their life has been changed in many ways by God, many struggle to cast their care upon Him. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says, "Do it because He cares. Mm -hmm. He cares for you." Um, you know, briefly, my my experience with this is is when my eyes opened up big time. Now, I've always known this a little bit from the first day I met him, but, but really it just flooded my soul probably about 20 years ago when I just knew, when I really knew that I knew, I was persuaded that God absolutely really loves me in well, spite of all my flaws. What made you cross over? Like what, because you were a preacher, mm -hmm. you had preached for years that God loved you. So mm -hmm. And God is good and God cares. I said all those things. What was it that made you know it? I wasn't completely convinced until it, what, in my specific uh, case, it was in my um, desire to know him better and do him better. I, 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 I burn out, and, and, and not burn out where I was wanting to quit the ministry, but I felt like I came to the end of, there was nothing else for, for me to try. I felt like no matter what I did, and, and, and most people thought I was a pretty good example as a Christian. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, I didn't live an immoral life. I wasn't, you know, committing adultery, stealing. I was, you know, I was, I was, I was a man who prayed. You know, I was a good Christian, but I always felt like I couldn't do enough to have the favor of God, to have the blessing of God, to have the anointing of God. You know, to have all the things that God, I thought God wanted me to have, I felt like I just wasn't good enough. I felt like I wasn't there. No matter how good I was, I still always had this sense of shortage about me. And so after about, you know, after some decades of that, you know, I'm finally like, God, it, I don't think I'm ever going to catch this carrot on the string here in front of me. Okay. It's been in front of me for 20 years, and I've never been able to attain that thing. You know, right. I've never been able to get satisfied by it. And so I, I, th I guess it was my, my hunger for what is it about and, and coming to the end of me that it was like God said, good, are you done now? And he just, in that place of where I gave up on me, where I just knew that whatever I did, it was never going to be good enough that, could, could, that I could convince my mind that I deserved God's goodness or his love. Mm -hmm. It's a funny thing because I would have told you from the scriptures that it's unmerited favor, that it's 
unconditional love, but mm -hmm. but in my in, in my, my mind, I just wasn't experiencing that. Mm -hmm. I just wasn't making that connection. You know, a lot of times what we do is we have this doctrine right in our head. Mm -hmm. Most of us would say, yeah, God loves us all. Most of us would say, yeah, God cares for us all. Most of us would say, God is good. Mm -hmm. So we have that connection in our, or we have that doctrine in our head, but the connection of experience where you are being flooded with his goodness mm -hmm. and being flooded um, with his love. Um, I'm, I'm seeing some comments from people saying, yeah, I feel just like that. And so, yeah, Kimmy was but, saying that. But hopefully we can help tonight because... Uh, because the reality is God just kind of just let me know it. It just came to me. It wasn't something I could convince myself of. God <laughs> was good to me and he just showed it to me. I just mm -hmm. saw it. I just felt it. I just knew it. It just became a reality as I'm laying there on my back saying, God, I don't have any more to, to give. I don't yeah. know what else to do. And, uh, and I just thank God for the spirit because he reveals to us these things as the Bible says, the things that have been freely given to us. Right. And what happened that day was the Spirit showed me what had been given to me. Right. And I just had a, a, I realized that I had everything because I had Him. And I didn't have to do anything to get any of this, that I got it all in Jesus. Mm -hmm. And it just, it became a reality because I wanted to know. I came to the end of where I kept, where I thought that I could get this done. Yeah. I came to the end of, where I thought that there were conditions upon this. Right. And when I just said, I cannot meet the conditions, God was like, well, I'm glad you finally figured that out because there are none. Mm -hmm. You know, there are none. You know, I, and you know, God, I can't, I can't do this myself. Well, I'm glad you figured that out because I never ever expected you to. I've known all along that you can't. And that's why I gave you right. this free gift of life and salvation. You right. just, you, you can't. So, you know, all this time, all that time, I thought God was wanting me to get stronger, mm -hmm. was wanting me to get better, was wanting me to pay pay a, a, a higher price for a higher calling or whatever. And and I realized God wasn't wanting any of that. Mm -hmm. He loved me just like I was. Yeah. And he would always love me like I am. And I am still, at least years later, so far from perfect. I don't keep... All, a lot of the law that's in this book, you know, the Bible. Um, I, there's so much of it, and, and, and I'll, I'll even say that I sin, because I know I do. <laughs> I still commit sin. <laughs> and God digs us. He loves me. And the, with, the, with this revelation of truth, now I always know that. Now I have the experience of that love mm -hmm. to where there's no condition upon it. Yeah. That, that no matter what I do, he loves me. And that has, a, has, has, has had the most positive effect on my life ever. Right. Because that allowed me to receive God's love, uh, the fruit of his joy, his peace, the self-control, mm -hmm. all that. Uh, but it, it set me free from me. It set me free from having to care for me having to defend me, mm -hmm. having to be right, having to look good, having to get people to believe in me, having to get people to follow me. He filled my soul because when I could receive that love where I didn't have to have, I didn't have to have people believe in me anymore. Yeah. I just started believing in them. Yeah. That's all that mattered to me. I believe in you. Yeah. You know, you don't have to believe in me anymore. You don't have to think I'm good enough anymore because I know that I'm loved. Mm -hmm. And I know that whether... Whether you can debate whether I'm good enough or not, that's irrelevant. God just loves me, whether I am or not. Yeah. And uh, and our, you, you start to believe He cares. Yeah. Our friend Lisa is on at Lisa Wood, and she had some some great comments about how we know that God is unconditional, we loving us, but we have a hard time receiving it. Mm -hmm. We have a hard time bringing it into our hearts. Yeah. And I think that's why you continue preaching this mm -hmm. because it, it is has so to be. You have to, to know this. To hear it and to hear it and to consider it and to think well, on it. Because I, I think for me, I, I, I came about that, that understanding a little differently than you did in the sense that I realized that what God was saying I wasn't really believing. And so yeah, I was going to point. step out and go, okay, I've believed myself on this on these issues for so long. 
what if I just believed God here? What if right. I just believed that he did love me? What if I just, what if I just, what the heck? What do I have to lose? What if I just believed yeah. that even though I, you know, I made this terrible mistake at work or I um, upset this friend, even right in that moment, I was the apple of his eye. I was a delight to him, a treasure. What if, what if that was true? And it was just that that sort of churning to say, it's not about religious knowing. I had all the religious mm -hmm. knowing that you could have, but it still didn't minister to my heart. Mm -hmm. It didn't make me feel secure in my heart. It made me feel smart. It made me feel like I could, you know, spew off your religious sure. jargon, you know, wherever. But in the places where you know that you know that you know, you you don't believe it. You don't you don't have that. That's a good point. Security and and and, um, and conviction that you would if you really took to took. Why not just with... believe it, like you said? And, <clears throat> and 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 to do that, you have to hurdle some things. There's the the the, the hindrance to hindrances to this really are uh, false teaching or or mixture teaching. People uh -huh. not we're not have it not rightly dividing the word. Is where is you know I call them the buts. The God loves you, but. And as long as you have a doctrine of God loves me, but you can never receive it because the but will always be in your face. You will always have a but, <laughs> you know, stopping you because there's just too many buts that we do. There's too many flaws we have. There's too many mm -hmm. sins that we commit, too many mistakes we make. There's, there's just our, 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 we just can't, can't do it. You'll always have the but. So you have to get rid of that. And I hope tonight we can give you the license to do that. I promise you, this is not, I'm not trying to lead people to hell here. Yeah. <laughs> I found joy and I'm trying to, trying to, I love you and I want you to have heaven on earth. And this is where it's at. You got to know that he loves you with no conditions. You got to know that he's good and you got to know that he cares. And, 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 and as long as you've got the buts in your doctrine, God loves you, but God is good, but well, yes, he cares. But mm -hmm. if you can throw all those away and you know, in, in, in one session, we can't cover all of the, the scriptures, but I've been preaching about it, you know, lately. Um, uh, you know, uh, you know, God loves you, but, you know, here, how about this one? God loves you like you are, but he loves you too much to stay the way you are. Well, what that is saying is that God is really, he loves you, but he's not happy with how you are. So he's now going to work trying to change you. And what, and the reason he wants to change you is because he's not happy with how you are. If you, you know, do you know somebody, do you, are you a friend of somebody or you're in a relationship with somebody that wants to change you? You know what they're really telling you is that I don't like how you are <laughs> and I want you to be something else. Mm -hmm. And, and that while that makes sense in the flesh, that's not God. That's not the kingdom of God. God loves you like you are while we were yet sinners. The Bible addresses this stuff while we were sinners. God loved us. Mm -hmm. How much more? Mm -hmm. um, who's going to, who is he that condemns, Romans 8 says? It's Christ that justified and even has laid down his life for us. Mm -hmm. So where's the point? Of, who shall lay any charge to God's elect, Romans 8? Who's going to point anything and, and charge you with not measuring up, not being good enough, not being there? You want to get all of that out because the truth is, None of this has anything to do with you. It all has everything to do with Jesus. Now, when you believe what we're saying, there's a response that happens. Mm -hmm. Something powerful happens in your heart and the bird gets his wings again. Your heart gets full in such a way that you don't have the selfishness just starts fading away. It becomes totally unnecessary and you become big inside. So now people can can look at you and say your mom is ugly and you're no good and you stink and you can smile and feel really, really big because what they say is not where your, uh, um, uh, what's, what's that called? Your self esteem comes from. It's, it's, and it doesn't come because you know that you've done what, what everything God said. It doesn't come because you've, you know, you've prayed more than everybody else or anything else. It comes because God loves you. And that's where it's all at. Okay, I have some things from, uh, some good comments from Kimmy she's making. I want to come to those. But also Rita, she, she says, 
It's so easy for Satan to convince you that God doesn't love you when you're in your darkness or in your storms of life. So can you kind of address that? Yeah. Because I think a lot of people um, struggle like, oh, God loves me, but Satan also hates me. So I'm kind of being pulled in these two different directions. The only way that that works the only way that the accuser of the brethren, Satan, can work that way is you've got to have deception. You've got to have a wrong belief. That's why we're here tonight. If your belief is right, there's no accusation that can work against you. So, so yeah, yeah, you'd say, well, Satan, you know, you know, works so hard to do this and it's so easy for him to do that. Once you know what we're talking about, it's not easy. I have not heard the accuser in my ear for many years. And he used to live on my shoulder. I mean, I fought it all the, all the time. You know, I was always being accused. And, you know, and, and, and really it was in my, my mind. I, my false belief had me accusing and condemning myself, really, for the most part. And, uh, 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 you know, there's the scriptures talk about the accuser has been cast down. How did he get cast down? Because there's now no condemnation. In Christ Jesus, what Jesus did. See, if we would really believe in the power of the blood of Jesus to cleanse us from all, all sin and all unrighteousness, do we believe that? If we believe that, there's no place to accuse. I don't care if you sin a thousand times tomorrow. The blood of Jesus is that strong. And That's there, called faith. And there are storms in life. There are um, situations that come up that I guess we probably used to attribute to Satan and now it's just a, a challenge of life and because you know that God is with you it doesn't terrorize you it doesn't freak you out that oh my gosh now Satan is coming against me it's just life is full of, of trials tribulations and with God we're going to face them we're going to walk through them we're not going to be terrorized by it we're not going to be um that's another moved by me, that's another thing we you've got to get the devil out of your life by getting him out of your mind by letting God be everything let don't let it be we, that's another thing see in the church we have messed messed ourselves up so much with so many things and, and by highlighting the things that weren't never supposed to be highlighted we've highlighted the devil we highlight sin we highlight all kinds of things but 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 why are we still trying to help people to highlight the simple things, the love of God, the first things, mm -hmm. the love of God, the goodness of God, the care of God? Mm -hmm. See, and, and those are the things that haven't been highlighted nearly as much, but we highlight all these other things. I like what Romans 8, 31 says, what shall we say about these things? <laughs> if God is for us, who can be against us? Now, when you, when you're, when you can receive what we're talking about here, you get flooded with God. You become God aware. You wake up in the morning and it's like God is everywhere, all, all around. And where, it, where I used to wake up and think, uh-oh, devils are here. Let's go fight today. You know, mm -hmm. let's fight the devil today. Especially if you do have reality ch challenges and, and, and maybe an illness or you have a relationship challenges. All of that, it, 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 it sort of feeds your fear rather than feeding your faith and, mm -hmm. and rather than seeing how big God is in comparison with the challenge that you're facing. Yeah, I don't even get into, you know, people get into, you know, why is this happening to me? Did I do it? Is God doing it? Uh, did the devil do it? You know, and honestly, there again, that doesn't even matter. What matters is God is your source. God is always your way out. God is always going to be your provision. And he's always going to love you and he's always going to care. And, and when you know that, you know how Jesus would Jesus could sleep through the storm in Galilee while 12 men could not sleep through that storm. In fact, they were freaking out and screaming because they thought they were going to die. Right. And he could sleep because the father cared. He was going to the other side and he didn't, it didn't matter to him if it was a storm. So when you, when you know what we're talking about, you don't feel like you you're not afraid of the day to day things, the 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 challenges, the the trials, even the hardships, because no matter what it is, God is with you, and you're going to live forever. 
Whatever you're going through, you're going to outlast it. And God cares. And one thing I know is that, and see, I, I really feel, you know, I used to think that faith was about stopping, heading off any kind of trouble before it ever happened. Mm -hmm. But honestly, I never learned how to do that. I still had, 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 had trouble. But what I found is now I'm not afraid of it or intimidated by it. I've got faith that says, I don't care what, whatever I have to deal with tomorrow. Now, faith is expecting. Faith is hopeful. Faith knows that God's good. So I am expecting good. And a lot of good just happens, you know, a lot. <laughs> a lot of good. I mean, it's kind of normal for me. But I do have trouble in life. I do have challenges at times. So do you. We all do in this world. Jesus said in this world, that's what, that's what goes on. But be of good cheer. I've overcome that. Mm -hmm. And so you can be happy in it and sleep during the storm and have peace during the storm and joy during the storm because you're not afraid so afraid that you got to control the minutia of everything. It's like, oh God, don't let that happen tomorrow. Because if that happened, I just couldn't handle it. I don't know what I would do. It'd be the end of life, you know, when it really wouldn't be. And faith makes you so big that says, no, no matter what comes tomorrow, me and God will be there. Mm -hmm. And I will be loved and I will be cared for. And God will be good. And so sometimes even when I experience something that's bad or negative, because I know God's good, you just keep walking in that goodness and you don't measure God's goodness by, by whether something bad happened or not. You measure God's goodness by knowing him, by who he is. And, and even when it looks like I lose, I end up winning. Mm -hmm. It just happens all the time because all good things work together for those who love him. Mm -hmm. Of course, we can't love him unless we know he loves us. And, and so, we just walk out. So, you know, we're not like Job who's trying to cover every base to make sure nothing bad happens. He couldn't do it. And and really, nor can you. Mm -hmm. But 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 you can have faith in God to where you're expecting and you can receive from God because you know he loves you and you know he cares and you know he's good to you. And it's see what we're talking about, this is the relationship. And to know that relationship you, you is to know him. His love and his goodness and his care. Even when things don't. Yeah, that has no, that's just the world we live in. Yeah. It's not God sending things to you, and it's not even necessarily a devil sending things to you. In the world, he said, we know this world. You were born into a world. There was trouble in this world before you showed up. You, yeah. you know, the devil didn't just decide to start attacking you because you're so awesome. <laughs> I am. Uh, I did want to go back to a, a, a question that Kimmy had um, earlier when you were talking about you know, God just wanting to love us, not necessarily saying, I love you en enough to not let you stay, you know, how you are right mm -hmm. now. She said, isn't that true, though? Do doesn't he want to change us to be like Thank him you. and not like our old man? You, well, here's what we want to think. And, and while that sounds right, um, and while that does happen, <laughs> I want you to know and we have, to kill, we have to kill this idea because this will stop people. This idea, though it sounds good, will stop yeah. people. His agenda is not to try to change you. His agenda is to love you and be with you and care for you. Now, what happens then is he changes you. You change. Love changes you. It annihilates the darkness, the fear. Perfect love does what? It casts out fear. Well, that's change. Was it because God was working on... God, it, 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 the work of the Spirit is to reveal these things to us. Mm -hmm. So ultimately, he, if you want to say, does God want to change you? Yes, he wants, you, he wants to make you the best. And by that, I mean, he wants you to be able to please him, which is to receive his goodness. And that's, that's the change that he wants. This is what we're, that's why we're speaking tonight. Because the Spirit wants to change, if you will, of people understanding His love and His goodness and His care. The change is not about getting you from smoking, drinking, and cussing and trying to change all those things about you. And, and the reason that, that we, you have to get this straight is because if you don't understand this, then you'll have this in your mind all the time that God is not pleased. And I'm here to tell you, God is pleased with you. Now, see, you get in trouble because I can already hear the thoughts. Yeah. Well, he loves us, but he doesn't have to love what he does, what we do. Okay, but his love is so big 
that he can still he, that that he can still love you and be pleased with you. See, now are we the children of God? The Bible says in 1 John chapter 3 verse 1, look at what kind of love this is that the Father has given us that we should be called the sons of God. Mm-hmm. Well, when you read Jesus, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, he shows us what a son of how a son of God relates to the Father. And he shows us how the Father relates to a son. And we see, and we, we, we see the Father telling the Son what? This is my Son in whom I am well pleased. Mm-hmm. You say, well, no wonder he was pleased. Jesus never did anything wrong. Well, Jesus said, wait a minute. Are you, are you, don't call me good. <laughs> There's only one good, and that's the Father. Mm-hmm. I'm not blessed because I'm so good. Mm-hmm. The Father loves the Son. Yeah. Therefore, the Father does these things. So like if you're you're if you're living the way you were created to be to to live if you if you're creating if you're living in the way you were created to live you know that God loves you and you are at your best. You 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 do do things that you didn't used to do as your old man because in your old man you were afraid, you were selfish, you were trying to take care of yourself. It brought out the worst in you and it really was not the real you. So as you um, come to receive and enjoy God's love, you automatically become the best you there that's, is. That's so right. That's what happens. And Kimmy made another good thing that I want to bring out. And I'm loving this communication because... We, we, we want to deal with these very, very yeah. things, but she, she says, but what about the Bible, you know, it says put off the old man, you know, put uh-huh. on the new man. Uh, two things there. That's a, that's a good point. Number one, that word put on, look it up. It means to sink back into. That means it's something that you already have, right? Mm-hmm. And then he says, put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Mm-hmm. So the new man says that, I mean, I already have holiness. Right. So where's all this sin consciousness? Well, yeah, but he doesn't like sin. Well, you're holy. You're you're created in holiness. You're not in, you're not you're not a sinner. You're holy. Mm-hmm. You know. But he doesn't want me, you know, going and killing somebody. Well, let's don't talk about all those stupid things. Let, let, you know, who, I hope nobody here is you know thinks that that you know. God saying, "Yeah, go out and kill people because it doesn't matter." Right. <laughs> you know? But, but, but He says, "But after God has created a true righteous, true holy, that put on the old man." It's the mindset. It's mm-hmm. it's accepting the things that we're talking about tonight. This is the new man that we're talking about. The man that's holy. Mm-hmm. Look what God did. Look at Jesus. How big this thing is. I, I think we've made Jesus so small. Mm-hmm. We've made the blood so powerless. We've made His love so wimpy. We've made, you know, we, we've made his goodness so, with so many caveats and qualifications. Yeah. And it's all because, all because we make these other things that we find the Bible talking about, not rightly dividing that word because Jesus rightly divides it. He's the sword. And with Jesus, the, you, you start with him. There's righteousness. There's holiness. The Bible says that that he has perfected us once and forever. When are we going to start believing that Bible instead of going out and finding, well, you know, God said over here he didn't like sin and God doesn't want this and that. Of course he doesn't like sin. That's why he came and died (laughs) for it. (laughs) Because it, it does say... While we were sinners, in other words, while we were sinning, he loved us. In other words, his love is big enough. It's it's big enough for you to make mistakes. What happens when, and it's true to say, you know, God doesn't like sin because it hurts us. But when you walk around with that sort of mentality, you're always going to be on hard on yourself whenever you make a mistake. You're always going to feel like you let God down, that you hurt him, that you made him mad and he's somehow disappointed and displeased. And you immediately go from security in his love to insecurity in, oh my gosh, I just messed up and now he's not pleased with me and oh my gosh. Or you start judging people, other people who maybe are are messing up. But if you go back to how he loved us while we were sinning, not to leave us that way, not to never produce any change. 
He loved us because he knew that love was the thing that was going to save us. Mm -hmm. Not that he had to come and save you and then now it's up to you to not make him mad again. Like that just keeps you in this just yeah. in this insecure um and we got to and, and knowing that love and, and and then Gwen brings up a good point that we we, we want to deal with us why does the bible say that god abhors the, the wicked because he, he 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 does that's why he did that but the people he loved see we got to rightly divide this don't take that and then throw out god so loved the world the whole world and it's not imputing their trespasses unto them so does he abhor the wicked yeah and so do i and the, the the wickedness was it was that whole sin that whole sin issue sin nature sin problem that we had but God did something this is our gospel Jesus came yeah. Jesus paid it Jesus was the sacrifice Jesus rose from the dead and Jesus gave us His very life and came to be a part of who we are came into union with us and made us holy so. When, when, when we talk about him abhorring the wicked, we're not talking about any of us. I don't care how much you sin. <laughs> we're talking about children of God, new creations here. And so, see, we, this is a really good talk because this is why. Everywhere we go, everybody will nod their head and agree that God's good, God cares, and he loves us. But these questions, I, I saw where Jill said something like, you know, it's, it's, it's the devil that makes us think God, God, God uh, doesn't love us. Well, how does it really work, though? Uh, what, what make, the only thing that makes us think God, God doesn't love us is, is really is not rightly dividing the word, not knowing the truth. Jesus said, once you know the truth, the truth will make you free. By us thinking that somehow God doesn't love us. And, and, and it happens because we... We're, we're looking at the Word of God from a head perspective and trying to put together all these things. And we see, we see so much through the Bible, God, God making an issue out of sin. But then Jesus. <laughs> but then Jesus. <laughs> and what we're doing is, is, when you see what we're talking about, your life becomes so Jesus, Jesus, Jesus centered that he becomes everything and he is that new man, right? Christ in you. And so in everything, in him we live and move and have our being, let him hate him. Let him be your righteousness. Let him be your lover. Let him be your strength. He's not trying to see if you're strong. He's not trying to see if you love him enough. He's not mad because you don't. He already knows you can't. Mm -hmm but he came to give us love. And he knew what man hasn't figured out yet, especially the church hasn't figured out, that the one thing that would cure us of our sin and our destruction would be our hearts getting filled with the love of God. And that love would fulfill man once again. And a fulfilled person is not someone looking for sin. A fulfilled person is not somebody that's wanting to hurt somebody because it's only hurting people that want to hurt somebody else. In fact, a, a, a fulfilled person who's received God's love is totally excited to love other people. Like they right. realize what a precious gift they've been given and all they want to do is give that to other people you become like your father you become it's, it's the you know, only way christ in you and you extend that to those around you it just it just happens you know it's not mm -hmm. uh this is automatic holiness this is the life change it's not a dogma right it's not it's it's it's, it's an not, experience it's an experience with someone who is love and who loves us and cares for us and he is good and, um, you know, we hope we can help to open up hearts to say, you know what? There is nothing about me to stop me from receiving the love of God because it has nothing to do with me. It has everything to do with his goodness. God's good. While we were sinners, he loved us and gave himself for us. 
And did he stop loving us after he, after he, you know, did he, after he loved us and gave himself for us, did he decide that he doesn't love us anymore? No, it's, it really is a love with no conditions. And, and, and another problem with this is it's, you know, um, God didn't give us a spirit of fear. So what is it that makes us afraid that if we just believe in a love with no conditions upon us at all, from now on throughout eternity, what makes us afraid that that won't be enough or that's going to cause us to sin, <laughs> thinking that that love is actually going to cause us to sin? Mm -hmm. I'll tell you why people sin. It's because of a lack of love. It's because they don't know that love. That's the only reason people sin. Mm -hmm. Once you get filled with that love, you find the sin goes away. There's no need for it anymore. But people don't sin because God loves them unconditionally. People sin because they don't know God loves them unconditionally. Yeah. You know, it's a flesh uh, mindset. It's a, a flesh worldview system that says that we have to control ourselves not to be selfish. Mm -hmm. We have to control ourselves to not... Uh, have addictions or act out in bad ways it's in, and it's a scary thing I think sometimes to say okay that has not been working for me what if I just trusted God what if I just trusted his love what if I what if I did do that and you'll find that he catches you that that it's really real it's not a head mental thing that you can figure out before you do it. You just have to say, all right, God, me and you, you you're going to be responsible if I, if I mess up here, but I'm going to believe you. I'm going to believe that your love is enough. I'm going right now and I'm going to believe it. And I'm not going to be perfect. I'm not going to do everything absolutely correct, but I'm going to do it knowing that your love is enough for me. And I'm just going to trust that. And see what happens. I mean, don't just take our word for no, it. No, because you can't. And even all the things that we're saying, you know, the questions that you ask are so good and yeah. so poignant. And they're questions that we have actually asked, I think, individually ourselves. 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 Come to and this. you just go to the Lord and just continue to just say, okay, this is what Rick said, but I don't, I don't really believe him. But can you let me know? So that between me and you, I know that I know that it's true. Not just because Rick Manis says it and not, you know, just because Rick and Judy are, you know, saying these things. Because I need to know to live my life um, well. I need to know, God, what you're saying to me. And, and that's really what I think we want. We don't, we don't want blind followers. We want people who are thinking and considering and, and really um, engaging in a relationship that is back and forth with God. Yeah. We don't want people to fought to believe just what we believe. Blind belief, we want yeah. you to we want you to enjoy knowing God. And because uh, it's we, good and it's fun and it's enjoyable, right? Right. And that's <laughs> that's the heaven on earth. That's what Jesus meant when he said, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It's this having this much love, this much joy, and this much peace, and so on. All the things of Christ in you yeah. being real. And it's real, and every one of us can have this every single yeah. day. All we've got to know is the truth. Yeah. God so loved the world. Yeah. The world. Sinful world. A world that was an enemy. A world that hated him. Yeah. A world that lied about him. <laughs> Yeah. So many of the world that said they didn't believe in him, yeah. he loved them yeah. and still loves them. I, I think when you've lived your life, a part of your life, just miserable and hurting and insecure and, and struggling, that when you see this freedom, you really, it's hard to stop talking about it. It's hard to not want to give that um, to others, that there's a better way to live than that constant self-assessment and self-judgment and, and insecurity and worry and fear and it's just it's just there's a better way Would what's what can we say she's probably it looks like okay. she's got another very, very good, good question <laughs> thanks for talking to me okay 
So someone accepts Jesus as their Lord and Savior. They believe they trust in him. They read his word a little. They pray, but they don't go to church. And they still smoke, drink, have sex outside of marriage. And it doesn't seem like there's a change in their behavior. Mm -hmm. What about that? They need to know what we're talking about. <laughs> this is where the change comes. <laughs> the only other option, if this isn't it, then we just have to condemn them and shame them into it. Uh -huh. And that's not that that's not how it works. I mean, you look at the whole thing, the, the whole issue. Shame didn't come until we until we got uh, got carnal. Uh -huh. I mean, we didn't have shame until we chose carnality instead of God. Uh -huh. And when we chose to go our way instead of God's way, which puts it upon us, and it's it's like Jesus was saying, then it's our strength and it's our ability, yeah. and we try to change ourselves. That's what Adam and Eve tried to do. Yeah. We try to change themselves. And, and, and the first thing that happened was shame came. Right. And shame is only, shame only comes with carnality. It doesn't mm -hmm. come with spirituality. He that believes will not be ashamed, the Bible mm -hmm. says. And I was even thinking about how Jesus dealt with the woman at the well, right? I mean, she's a Samaritan. She's not mm -hmm. even a Jew. So I, you know, I don't know if it's a good parallel, but I mean, he well, could have called yeah. her out. He could have said... Hey, I know you're sleeping with a guy you're not married with. I know you're not following all these rules. I mean, he could have uh, dealt with her that way, but he didn't. You know what? He he had a conversation with her. He valued her. You know, and and you do in the scripture get to see this beautiful change happen. And and you don't always see that in real life in the immediate moment, but it. It is that, that that person, you could say, well, they're not going to church, they're doing this sin, they're doing that sin, so it didn't really take, it didn't really work. Or you could say, you know what, they're on a they're on a journey with the Lord and they don't know that complete love of yeah. unconditional love, or they wouldn't probably yeah. be doing some of those things. Yeah, if they knew this, if people knew this They wouldn't need uh because you would you would fulfill the the whole the whole uh, everything that uh, even though there's not a requirement of the law anymore because Romans 8 says that Jesus took care of all of that, but you would fulfill the lifestyle that, that God's holy law would demand. Paul said that. He says, if I love, if I, if, if I love, then I'm not going to kill, I'm not going to covet, I'm not going to do steal, etc. Mm -hmm. And so it automatically fulfills that lifestyle because you're living out of that, that nature. But yeah, that, I'm glad that question came up because that's one that comes up a lot. Right. And so you know, well, what about somebody? Who's, you know, they say they're a Christian, but they don't. They don't. They don't live it. They need to know this. They need mm -hmm. to know this love. That's the only way they can do it. Yeah. And the way that the reason that they're not living is because they don't know it. Yeah. They don't know this love of God. Jill um, kind of adds something. She says that they're probably still under the law and don't understand about grace. The more you try to whip yourself into acting good, the more you fail. And then um, Diana says, he chooses to be love to us. And then Kimmy says, when you love that person and you see them hurting because of their choices, but you still rejoice in their salvation, it's pretty hard. That's another good them. good point because, you know, many of us have, have, have dealt with that. And that's the thing about love, too, is it does let us choose. I mean, it let us go. After that knowledge of good and evil, even though God said, if you do that, you'll, you'll die. And we, we chose it and he let us choose it. Mm -hmm. And he lets us choose everything we do. Yeah. And there are consequences. But love is still so big that it empowers us. We can, mm -hmm. we can handle it. You have, you have a loved one and you know they're making the wrong choices. Mm -hmm. And you know it's hurting them because of they're doing it. And you don't want to see them hurt. It's very tempting to want to be able to control that and make them make the right choice, yes, you know, yeah. but you know, you can't. So, yeah. so love is what you do. And somehow, see, when you, when you, when, when you roll into what we're talking about, the fruit of the spirit is there. There is a peace that's there. Mm -hmm. There is a joy that's still there in spite of all the situations. That's why Jesus said in the world, there's tribulation, but be of good cheer. Yeah. You can still be happy yeah. <laughs> because He's overcome all of that. Yeah, I think when I when I was uh, working in Africa, I mean, you you saw a lot of people making um, choices that were to their detriment, and you want to go out and just save them and say, "Stop it! Stop it! Don't do that." You can speak. I mean, that's what we do. We we try to encourage. We try to speak. We we talk about the love of God. We put that out there. 
but we can't make anybody receive it. I mean, that really is between them and God. And I think the best witness you give to someone like that is enjoying your own life and, and, and really enjoying that, the freedom that you have for, for a good life, you know? That's and, right. And, and there are people, especially, I think, people close to us that are, a lot of times, they're not the ones that are going to hear it from us. They're, they're going to probably hear it from, you know, some other way, you know, other you person. You never know. You never know. It could be you. But, but it, it isn't all on you that right. you have to make them see right. the error of their way. In fact, usually when that happens, they dig their feet in even further, you know, because they're feeling like they have to defend themselves. So that it just kind of makes it even harder. That's, that's okay. really good. I see something. There was a little, okay. uh, a, a little uh, here, here and there going with Jill made a statement about because people don't know, they don't know grace right. is what the problem is. And then, and then Kimmy says, well, you know, I know people that, they do believe in grace, but they still, you know, just poo-poo the things of God, you know? Well, so here's the same thing again. They, they, they have a doctrine of grace. They have this idea that, okay, yeah, God forgives, whatever. But when you know, <laughs> when you yeah. know that grace in your life, <laughs> there again, that's the difference. And so we're not going to throw away the, the, the truth that makes people free about the love and grace of God because somebody misunderstands it. And, 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 yeah. and therefore looks like they're abusing it. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, people do that with love. I hear that one all the time, you know, well, well if people just think God loves them. They'll just say, well, God loves me. I'll just go out and do blah, blah, blah. Well, there again, they have a doctrine of it, but it's not fruitful. It doesn't make it, it doesn't help you any. It doesn't empower you any to have just a head assent agreement to it. But when you know the love, when you, when you're loved, when, not when you believe, well, God loves me, God loves me. It's not God loves me. It's he loves me. I'm loved. Mm -hmm. I'm experiencing that love today. Mm -hmm. See, you know, Rick, I'm, I'm the guy that, you know, when I was a young man, I had no place to go. I, I slept under bridge overpasses downtown. I slept in parked cars. I, you know, sold blood plasma at $5 a pop back in the 70s to get me, I could get me a sandwich and a pint. Uh, you know, for that, I lived that life, went through, had, was, was, you know, went through seasons of different addictions to different things, the, the uppers, the downers, the alcohol, pot perpetually, just always, just totally lost and blind and messed up. I was a bird with no wings. My problem was not, well, Rick, you need to straighten up. How many people told me what I needed to do? Mm -hmm. And my condition, my hurt condition, I just couldn't find the wherewithal to do it. But today I have love. That is my claim to fame. I'm loved. And that's why this is my message. I almost have no other. Everything is wrapped up in that love. Colossians 3 says everything is wrapped up in it, or God holds all things together in that love. Love is perfection, the bond of perfection. If you want the perfection of God, don't go out and try to be perfect. <laughs> Be loved. That's the perfection because perfection is not the absence of flaws. Perfection is the perfect love of God in the midst of our flaws. And that's the way it was in the beginning. Mm -hmm. You know, we just, we didn't become naked after we went, uh, we, we chose our own way. We discovered we were naked mm -hmm. and we were ashamed of our own condition because we didn't measure up. Mm -hmm. But God, God never did care about it before that. Mm -hmm. God didn't care. And we didn't care either because it wasn't about us. It was about God. Mm -hmm. But when it made it about us, then we start caring. Right. And shame and fear and self-defense and all of that has gone on ever since. Mm -hmm. And then Jesus comes and takes us back out of the shame and out of that spirit of fear mm -hmm. and back into wholeness, which is found in the love of God. Mm-hmm. Kimmy made a comment uh, that that breaks a mama's heart, and I'm I'm guessing she's talking about a child. Yeah, watching someone someone close to her, and it, it made me think of the prodigal son. You know, the the story mm -hmm. of the prodigal son, because we've I've always thought that was about the boy, this son who left and got his life turned around and came back. But really, yeah. that parable is about the father. Right, is really about the goodness of the father, and you know. 
in it, the father lets him choose and lets him be cruel to him and demand that, you know, demand his portion. And he knows that he goes away and just blows it all, might never come back. And yet you don't see the father really um, struggling or worried or, I mean, at least it doesn't, sh doesn't show that part of it but that he's waiting and he's anticipating that the son is going to come back yeah. and that he'll be ready for him with open arms and goodness. And, and when he talks about a feast and the clothes on it, to me, those are the things that when you know that you're loved unconditionally, you feel like you're fed with the best of the food, you know, and you're wearing these robes that are, that's how you feel when you know that you're loved. You're not choosing the lesser things the you know the you know things that are really harming yourself you're choosing and you're receiving I love that parable. this great and we see that he he went ahead and received it he, he showed up willing to be a slave yeah but pretty soon when he saw the father's love and goodness yeah. for him he was able to receive the royal treatment and i would say that's what <laughs> happened to me that's when i to me. started to say well what if it is true what if he does I'm, I'm totally depressed. I'm, you know, I have nothing in my life that I'm happy about. But what if I just chose to believe this to be true? What if I just considered it to be true? And then I see that the father's there for me with, you know, the fatted calf and a party and a, and a husband who I couldn't have prayed for better, you know. And so it, it, it is over and above what you... Um, what you could have planned for yourself or thought for yourself. That unconditional love is big, 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 big. Yeah, so. it really is. And there again, another uh, a comment from Kimmy. And what it does there again, um, as you embrace more of what we're talking about here, um, you, you find out that the behavior is not such an issue anymore. The love is just big enough to cover it all. Love covers a multitude of sins. And then as a side note, not, not that you use this as a manipulative tool, because that wouldn't be love, but love does have an effect, you know? Yeah. <laughs> sometimes quick, sometimes slowly. But I love that, I, 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 I love that prodigal son story, because mm -hmm. it's just like you were saying, normally we use that to try to make us the hero. We, what we, the way I used to be taught was that, you know, the prodigal son came to his senses, he wised up, and he turned back and he went back to the father's house. And that's what we've got to do too, mm -hmm. you know? And so there again, it made him the hero in the story because he was smart enough to turn around and we're supposed to, and, we're, and, and we want to be the hero. We want to be smart enough to go to the father's house. But the real hero, as you said, was the father. Mm -hmm. And I always say that he, you know, the, the father did not forgive the son when the boy came back home. The father mm -hmm. forgave him the day he left. Mm -hmm. And he was there waiting for him because that's obviously a picture of the heavenly father that Jesus was, was showing us. But the, the repentance did not come when he was in that pig pen. The repentance or the change of mind happened when, when the father was bestowing, lavishing all this goodness on him. And yeah. something in his mind changed where he no longer said, I'm just going to see if the father will make me a servant. He now starts becoming the man of the hour. The, the guest of honor and he starts taking it and he starts dancing at the party yeah. and rejoicing while he's the guest of honor. He's wearing the robe and the ring and he's accepting it because he sees that the father cares for him yeah. that much and it changed him inside. Yeah. Well, I, I wanted to say to you, Kimmy is that I hate that you're having to go through this. This is hard and I'm not, I hope, we're not coming across like making it this really light thing, you know. It is a deal. It is a deal, and it is hard for a mama to watch something like that. But there is also a way where you can, in your lane, receive God's love, and that love will pour out to your son. And in time, and there is no time limit. God did not say, "Okay, as soon as you get saved, you're immediately every behavior is going to change, and you're going to be perfect." So give it, you know. You focus on receiving your love, you know, God's love for you. And I'm thinking that will pour out onto your, your It does. Son. That naturally happens. And God loves, I mean, you know, I know she knows all of this. But, yeah. you know, we you know, know that you're, awesome. 
your son is loved by God far more than, you know, even... And like you said, you know, he, he trusts God and believes in him. And, and uh, you know, that's that's a good thing. I I really think it helps to, to be more more of that nature of God-minded, that love-minded, rather than behavior-minded. We measure, yeah. I think we measure too much yeah. by behavior. Yeah. We measure, you know... Uh, their, their status with God, you yeah. know, somehow with my behavior. And our status with God is measured by God's heart, yeah. God's goodness. That's what establishes our status. Yeah, and you think about how God loves us, you know, even in our incomplete knowledge or our in incomplete behaviors or whatever. He has so much patience for us, so much uh, grace towards us, even when we are doing something that is not our best, you know, isn't to, to our best, you know, uh, self. And uh, when I think on that, when I think of him, it, you know, it really touches my heart. And I want to be that way to other people. Oh, yeah, you know, it does. It, doesn't, it inspires you to be that way. Yeah. It doesn't, God's love does not make you want to go now just be ugly because God loves you. Yeah. <laughs> it makes you... Or, or be impatient with other people or just trying to get their behaviors to change, you know, it's and you know that they're hurting themselves. You know, you know that it's hard to watch people. Because God's them. love is a nature. And it's in there. And it gets nurtured and nourished. You know, mm -hmm. when I got saved, I had it. But it wasn't until I saw that love toward me, really, yeah. that, that that which was in me got got nurtured and it could come come forth and, and uh, show up in me. Okay, it's been an hour. Let's, I want to read this this verse and this we're all familiar with it but okay. it's beautiful and it caps off what we're talking about mm -hmm. here Romans 8:38 I am convinced I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love not death not life not angels not demons not our fears today or our worries about tomorrow not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love, no power in the sky or in the earth below. Mm -hmm. Indeed, nothing in all of creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Lord. There again, if you want to know how God is, look at Jesus. He's the one that reveals him to us. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we love you guys. We want you to. We want you to have heaven on earth every day. We yeah. care. We 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 care about. How you're doing today we care about how you're going to do tomorrow we yeah. care that you we want you to have love and joy and peace and goodness and and, and faith and self-control and all those things we want you to have those every single day well you actually have them we want you to experience them mm -hmm. because uh that's what you received when mm -hmm. you got jesus and when you got jesus you got everything especially love the mm -hmm. greatest the greatest is love Amen. It does, Jill. God's love makes you, makes makes you love others, and it spills out. It really, really does. Hey, James Smith, I love you too. Give me a call when you can. We uh, we we need we, we, we need like to go dinner. to dinner. We want to get yeah. with together with you, my friend. It's been too long. And I just love everybody's loving on Kimmy. You know, saying we love you, Kimmy. We're for you. People will be praying for you. And I appreciate the interaction. That's what this. Yeah. That's why we do it live. We could just record it, but the live part of it is so that we can have the the talk, the fellowship, the, the Bible study yeah, because here. Because what Rick says is he's really, he's concerned about you living today. And we love answering the questions and yeah. dealing with the thoughts and the comments. That's what it's about. So not just a head knowledge, but an experience knowledge. with love. Okay, so we are home for a little bit. Yeah, we're home for a while. So we're going to be, be here next um, Tuesday. Uh, a couple of things. We're going to be, we'll be, we'll be able to do a e church next Tuesday because we'll be home. Uh, we've got, if you're in the central Florida area, I'll be speaking at Grace Church Orlando in Longwood, Florida, uh, this Sunday, 1030, Sunday morning. So I want to see all of my Florida friends there. Um, and we're, um, hopefully soon we'll be getting some good equipment. We'll be able to make a lot of, we've got a lot of ideas of videos and things that we want to make. And so if we can get our equipment, we'll be, um, we'll be doing that. So we're trusting God about that. Rick uh, did a little Go did a little fundraiser, fundraiser on, on Facebook, Facebook and, so. and, and, and and people have already jumped on it. It's just amazing. I, that's not that. something we normally do. She goes, I'm late. <laughs> I'll yeah. have to go back and watch it. Okay. That's good. That's one good thing about this. It records, right? <laughs> yeah. We love you, Susan. And you guys have a great week. And we'll see you next Tuesday. Be loved. <laughs>